Hi, my name is Johnny Gaynor, and I'll be leading the WXVU podcasting workshop. So if you're here, you're hopefully trying to learn a little bit more about how you can build and create your first podcast. Uh, a little bit about me and why I will be leading this. I am an adjunct professor here at Villanova University in the communications department, uh, but I've also done a good bit of audio design in the past. I uh, had my own show at Millersville University when I was an undergraduate. It was a blend of radio and talk, so I had to write a good bit about, you know, my content, what I was going to sort of format and produce. And in addition to this, I've done a good bit of work in downtown Philadelphia with Philly Cam, a community media organization in where they have a lot of audio and technical design that I helped out with. So to start, uh, we should probably answer what exactly a podcast is. I'd imagine if you're here, you already know, but just to clear some things up, uh, a podcast is it's simply an audio file that can be played live, recorded for downloading later, and it's usually in a format of a series. So there's usually more than one. And that particularly is what we want to talk about here is how can you formulate, write, and produce a podcast that is lasting for your listeners. Um, this usually can be done as easy as recording on your phone through the memo app, or possibly you can record at, you know, a professional studio like WXVU has at the radio station. Uh, so to begin, we're going to start looking at how to build your podcast and what that might look like. So let me share my screen. What you should see here is the first slide. And we're going to jump right into it. What to consider before recording your podcast. So first things is you need to ask yourself why this podcast and why are you the best to make it? Uh, one of the most important things to consider when making a podcast is why you're creating it. Podcasting takes a lot of time. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. It's not like playing music, you know, over the radio where somebody else has created the content. You in particular need to actually write and produce the material. It's also important to think about why you're the best one to do this. Your listeners want to know why they can trust you with the information or believe that they'll be entertained by your specific information. So what do you want your podcast to be about? And how is it different than anything else that's available? There are a lot of podcasts out there. It's always becoming, I think, increasingly popular medium, and it's a great one to jump into. But just because anyone can make a podcast, uh, which means most topics and content are already being covered, doesn't mean everyone should. So it is a bit competitive, but if you're willing to do it and you're willing to put the work into it, it can be a greatly rewarding experience. Uh, first, you really want to consider how your podcast differs from the other ones out there. I strongly advise against doing podcasting ideas like this is me and my friends, and we just want to talk about pop culture. Uh, unless you and your friends have something unique, like a degree pertaining to the topic, or if you're actively involved in the pop culture world, uh, that's going to be a hard podcast to sell. The first thing listeners are drawn to is the topic and then to the host themselves. So again, unless you're a celebrity of some kind, it's hard to market a show that's just based on your personality alone. So instead, think about what makes you and your program unique. Finally, consider what your long-term goals might be. One way to figure out your topic angle and sort of the marketable traits surrounding it are to consider what your goals are for the show. Do you want to entertain? Are you gonna inform? Are you gonna teach something new? Are you gonna try and garner interest in a specific subject? Are you gonna try and shine a light on an unreported issue? Totally okay for your show to be, you know, just for fun and for no other reason than that, but once you've figured this out, it should really be about creating and making your brand, finding your audience, and all of that's going to be making your podcast that much easier to create in the long run. Okay, next. It's perfectly okay to start with something that's not going to be, you know, an everyday type of podcast. You know, nobody's expecting the world from you in that way. You should try and choose a consistent day that you'll post episodes or try and record episodes. You should give your listeners something to look forward to 
and so that you know they know when to tune into your new episodes. And if you're going to start with something that's maybe bi-monthly or monthly, think of ways to interact with listeners on the off weeks to stay on their radar. Something like social media. Can you post you know, teasers or images and videos that point to what you're going to cover next? Next, we're going to talk about the podcasting format. This is important, especially because you need to consider what exactly, you know, the shape of your podcast is going to look like. How many hosts do you think you're going to have on the podcast? Too many voices over top, you know, trying to talk over each other can be a little annoying. So you want to make sure you have just one, two, three manageable hosts at a time. Are you going to have featured guests or guest interviewers? Are you going to have people come in that are, you know, an expert in the field, somebody who might be of interest in the field? Will your show be broken up into segments? Are you going to have, you know, this week features very specific content compared to the next week, compared to the next? Or will you simply improvise? You know, you could do the whole show just on the fly. You could try and have some sort of comedic banter between you and another host. You can try that format out. However, I will say this is probably the most difficult. Okay, now that we've talked about podcast formatting, I'm going to talk simply and very quickly about the importance of outlining. So just like any assignment, it's always good to draft a rough script or some sort of outline that can help you and maybe another host or interviewee sort of follow along with the format of the show. Make sure that you are consistently and logically transitioning from your main points to subpoints, and then again to the next main point. Even if you have one great big idea for an episode of your podcast, and then maybe a smaller chunk towards the end, make sure to beef up that ending too so that the rest of the podcast actually feels balanced between your points. Again, the importance of making an outline is to see how much content do I actually have, and is the show ready for me to produce? You don't want to start making a podcast and realize 12 minutes in, oh, I really don't have enough to produce, you know, a half hour format or even an hour long format. So here's some tips on programming your show. First and foremost, like I had mentioned earlier, one of the biggest things that it's going to draw an audience is your personality and your authenticity. This is something that I think community radio has a lot of. Um, so at WXVU, you can really hear a lot of those college radios. Um, DJs come through with their authenticity. They really want to be there and they care. So just like with your podcast, you should really try and formulate um, a tone and a presence that the audience feels like, okay, this person really cares and wants to be there. The next thing to sort of think about and try and avoid is dead air. Broadcasting silence is probably one of the worst things you can do in a podcast. However, it's really easy to fix as, you know, in the post-production booth or through editing sort of apps and software, you can make sure to cut all of that out. But try and keep the podcast flowing, keep it feeling natural, and, you know, avoid that dead air or just silence. Second thing to try and avoid is your tone and volume. Again, in a more technical detailed workshop, uh, we should cover also how close or far away um, a host or maybe a guest is to the mic. You wanna make sure that, especially again in the post-production element that you can edit out and make sure that all of those sort of varying degrees of volume are level in the overwhelming, I think, majority of cases, when a presenter is sort of speaking at the wrong volume, it'll be because he or she is not wearing headphones. So make sure you have good headphones. Make sure you're listening in to what you're doing. Make sure that you are on top of the volume. And finally, a simple sort of technique for staying personal when speaking is to really, really be mindful of your time. Again, the time it takes to speak over a podcast, the time it takes to write a podcast can be draining, and you might 
realize that halfway through an hour long format and start to lose your wind or start to lose that authenticity. Keep it up, keep the pacing right, make sure everybody's feeling good and you should be fine. So how do you build that tone? How do you build that authenticity and how do you really stay consistent with it episode after episode? Well, the most important thing to do is probably, again, thinking about what's driving the show to begin with. Try and narrow in on something that's not being talked about. Try and narrow in on something that you're an expert of. What is it that's driving you to create a show that other people want to enjoy and listen to? Find and occupy that niche. If you are really into sustainable technology, don't just talk about sustainable technology. Isolate and find a specific area of interest. Maybe it's the use of rare materials like lithium and batteries, or maybe you could just focus on sustainable construction practices and isolate very specific examples. Again, to keep up that tone, to keep up that sort of excitement, you need to find exactly what it is that you're interested in. And truly, I think the best way to do this is spend time listening to podcasts that you enjoy. Figure out specifically why you like them. What do they do that's unique? What do they do that keeps you coming back week after week? Why do you keep listening? Is it the podcast content? Is it the host's personality? Or maybe they just have great music. Take what you like about the shows that you listen to and to try and apply the same sort of setting to your own show. So next, let's solidify that show format, the basic structure. Once you have solidified your sort of outline and structure, the most important thing to do is stick with it. It's really hard to have an audience to keep coming back, to keep sort of listening and staying with you week after week if they can't tell what the format's going to be. If they know that they have a half hour every week that they can enjoy your content and they know exactly what they're going to get out of it, they're more likely to keep coming back. So it's important to keep, to really stick to that format once you have it. You want to make it seem as though each episode of your show is actually a part of a larger body of work. Of course, this isn't to say that you can't evolve or change or eventually branch out and do something different with your podcast, but you shouldn't try and make drastic changes from episode to episode. Try a new segment here and there, but don't change it up too much from show to show. So a really easy way to sort of begin your format of your structure is that all podcasts have a very linear trajectory. The format of a show is often going to be informed by its topic. A talk show is probably going to have a different format than a technology news show or you know, an informal comedy show is gonna be much different than a horror crime podcast. Stick to the sort of linear progression of whatever your topic is. So for example, on the screen, you should see my example structure for a 30 minute music show. This is a talk show that's based around possibly, you know, new music that's coming out. So whether you enter each of these sections with a sort of definite, definite break, like a musical interlude, or just by saying something like, and now let's talk about the effect of sort of video in modern cinema or whether you sort of organically transition from one section to another, you still need to follow this basic structure. We have the intro, the middle, and the end. Now, of course, this is just an example structure, but it would be good to stick to one like this. By following this format, it's pretty clear that your listeners will know exactly what to expect. You know, they have your talking where you're greeting them and, you know, talking and previewing about what's coming up. Then you have the middle chunk, which is probably the bulk of your written content. And then you have the ending where you can wrap up and again preview. You want to keep this cycle going so that your audience always knows what to expect when they come back. Again, I can't emphasize enough that previewing is probably going to be one of your greatest assets to producing a podcast. 
it's one of the best way to give your podcast legs and to, for, to really help the audience visualize what will be coming next. Give them something to be excited for. Paint them a picture of what this podcast is trying to do. And again, paint them a picture of the larger sort of conversation that your podcast is living in. And just returning one more time to that sort of um, outline or format that we had before, it's simple, it's easy, but have your start, have your middle, and have your end. And in doing so, you're going to help build your tone. So we were talking earlier about how do you stay excited? How do you stay energetic throughout a podcast? Well, the more that you outline and the more that you build structure, the more easy it is for you to sort of fall into it and build that tone. Another way to do it is to start strong in your tone, start excited, get the audience hooked, grab their attention, and then in the middle, try and bring it down just a bit. You know, don't go flat, don't go totally bored, but try and bring it down because it's hard for anybody to keep that energy up. Then at the end, re-invoke that sort of energy and get everyone sort of listening and grab their attention one more time before you close out. Ending with a segment as strong as your opening segment can really, again, bring the listener coming back. Additionally, you can also start with your show's strongest topic. If you have a sort of really captivating breaking news, maybe possibly new information or a really strong opening that you've written, start with that. Again, if you're starting with some sort of news, start with the best story. If you're doing some sort of music, start with the catchiest, newest, or most compelling song. And finally, I just have a few quick technical details to make sure that you can start podcasting sooner than later. First is make sure you've got your editing and your sort of software and mixing gear ready to go. This is going to be probably the longest and most tedious part of podcasting outside of the writing and formulating the show. I have on the screen here probably the most popular and easily the most available software for editing any type of music or podcast, and it's called Audacity Editor. You can actually go download it for free and get started recording right away. It's super easy to use. There's plenty of documentation and a lot of guidance online if you want to look further. Additionally, WXVU can provide you some additional help to how to use Audacity. Another thing that you can do um, once you start editing is try and build room tone or ambience. So what this means is you actually, as you're recording, have a tone in the room that is constantly going on behind the speaker's voice. So every environment you record in has its own ambience or room tone. Uh, you can actually record that ambience and layer it within the editing process in order to help make cuts and fades seem more natural. And finally, like we talked before, something that you can try and think of or try and avoid is microphone pops. Pops are the blasts of air that distort audio often formed by words that start with the letter P and sometimes the letters B, T, and K. It's really, really easy to, you know, fall into leaning too close to the mic, saying some words with excitement if you're in the moment and not realizing that you're having these microphone pops. So the best way to prevent it is with good microphone placement, usually four to six inches away from the speaker's face. So finally, to close out this workshop, again, I just want to leave you with some general tips. But most importantly, start thinking about why it is that you want to record this podcast. What about you makes you a credible speaker? How are you going to provide the audience with content that keeps them bringing back? How are you going to build your tone and excitement to make sure that they keep coming back? And maybe most importantly, how are you going to edit and put together this podcast? Hopefully this has helped you get started, at least just thinking about podcasts, thinking about how you're going to write them, 
and then maybe soon you can actually start the process. Thanks.